Christmas week, my friends. Thank you for being with me. Um, I hope you've been enjoying all the Christmas programs that I've been trying to share with you this season, a few more than I usually do. Um, they've been fun for me to look at as I've been preparing them for you. But I have something here um, that I did a, a video about um, back in 2018. And it actually is a letter and postal cover that I bought. Um, $25, which is more than I usually spend on something like that, but it was very special to me. Um, reminiscent perhaps of the Ingalls on Little House on the Prairie. It was written on Christmas Day in 1858 from a place called Homestead in Benzonia, Michigan. And that's up uh, in the Traverse City area, up in that area if you're familiar with the state. Now, now, it would be a benefit us, before I share with you this particular letter, a little background at the area. So let's take a look at what uh, I could find to say about this small community. Benzonia, as I already said, is a village in Benzie County, northwest lower Michigan, uh, lower peninsula of Michigan. The village is located in Benzonia Township at the southeast corner of Crystal Lake. That sounds really pretty, doesn't it? The village is quite small with a total area of about uh, 1.13 square miles. 1.13 square miles? Okay, that would be pretty small, wouldn't it? Benzoni had its beginnings in 1858 as an educational Christian colony based on the model of Oberlin, Ohio, and its founding was under the leadership of Charles E. Bailey. Now, now on to the letter. It was written to Lydia E. Barnard at Wyndham County, Jamaica, New Jersey, care of E.C. Cleese, and the postmark is December 26, Benzonia, and written at the writer's homestead, as I said. So now we're ready to uh, take a look. You're going to be seeing some close-ups of it as we go along, but this is the, uh, excuse me, just while I sit there. This is the, uh, the letter and the cover. It has a pink uh, George Washington stamp on it. It is a perforated stamp. See that original that stamp originally came out in Perth, and the post office had to cut them apart with scissors. Uh, but um, by 1858, they were perforated. So, having shown you that, let me read you some of them. Dear Lydia, I have just written a letter to Celia, and now will try to write to you. It is Christmas Day, and want you to know that we think of you and all of our dear friends in New Jersey and wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Although they both will have passed away before this reaches you, and perhaps some of our dear friends too. Oh, how we rejoice when we hear from you and hear that some dear one has passed away and we can never see them again in this world. That, let me break for a minute, that in itself sounds like a strange way of putting it. But they know because their isolation, you have to remember the times, 1858, Michigan was a wilderness, and travel was, was difficult. So they knew that they wouldn't see their friends again in this life, but that they would in, in heaven, in, you know, in the afterlife. So to continue, we received a letter from Stanley, and it came one week ago today, and I suppose you would like to know how we are getting along. We are just now enjoying the greatest of all blessings. That is, good health and a good appetite and plenty to eat. I don't know how long it will be so. We have never found our cow, but we but we found the uh, blank and sold them. And we have bought a cow and we have plenty of milk and we have some butter also. Our cow lives on, on browse and a pint of milk three times a day and still looks very small. In the spring, we expect to make some sugar. The spring's uh, new sugar, I suppose, will taste just as good here in the woods as it does in New Jersey, presumably maple sugar, which has <laughs> been produced since ancient times here in Michigan. Well, not just here in Michigan, but it is delicious. If you've never tasted maple sugar, oh, you must, you must. I actually got to see it made. <laughs> what a process, but mm. anyways. The children want, I should tell you, what they had on, found on their plates this morning for Christmas morning. The, this morning, Eugene and Herbert had some ginger snaps and some mince pie. 
and an apple. And Charlie and Freddy had some ginger snaps and mince pie and an onion. Now yesterday we had a, had a real baked Indian pudding, the first we have seen since we left New Jersey. We did not have any snow to stay, uh, uh, to stay until the 5th of December. Since then, we have had plenty of it. We have a great deal of cloudy, stormy weather, but I don't think it is so cold here as it is back home in New Jersey. I think you wrote in one of your letters that you wish us to send our pictures. I am very sorry I did not get them in Orlando, or in Orlando, excuse me. We shall not likely uh, be able to get them now for a good while. It's far to go to Travers, and it would be quite a job for us and cost a great deal. We shall be very glad of yours, and we'll get ours as soon as we possibly can. Isaac might get his if he would, as he would, for he often goes to Travers, I'm assuming Travers City area. Isaac says, when you write, write about all the neighbors and about King's store and what Mrs. Harding is doing. This winter, I will not write for I am ashamed of what I have written. I am almost blind, and I guess you will think I am lazy. I can hardly see the murals that I have made. Be sure and write when you get this. Emily E. Barnard. Charlie wants me to send you uh, a sprig of cedar. We have plenty of them here. Imagine Christmas morning. What do you have for Christmas breakfast? I usually, I usually have frosted Christmas cookies and eggnog. Uh, but they had, uh, well, two of the kids had an onion to eat, along with their ginger snaps and mince pie. I never think of eating an onion as a raw treat. But from my, what I've been told, even by friends of mine that live close to me, um, their families did it. Uh, you know, off. Now, ginger snaps, if you've never had them, are real hard cookies. I used, my mom used to get them when I was a kid and we'd dunk them in tea and they were delicious that way. But they mentioned mince pie and Indian pudding. Now mince pie is of British origin and it's filled with a mixture of dried fruits and spices called mincemeat and is traditionally served uh, during the Christmas season. Be besides dried fruit, um, it also contained uh, suet. I've never tried it. I've never even had, I've never even tried uh, what do they call fruit cake? Even though some people think I am a fruit cake, <laughs> but I've never tried it. And then they had Indian pudding, um, and that is a baked custard with milk, butter, molasses, eggs, spices, and cornmeal. The name likely came from the cornmeal, which was known as Indian meal, way back in the day. Now, being that this was a Christian community, um, I would suppose, and I think it would be fair to surmise that. There was a great deal of Bible reading Christmas Day. Um, you know, we all know that our Lord was not born on December 25th. But it is good to have a day that is set aside to celebrate that birth which changed all of mankind's history and all of our future to come. As we look around at a very troubled world right now, this Christmas, it is a great comfort to know that the same Jesus Christ who watched over his followers back then is watching over us now and has everything in control. So I hope you enjoyed this little look back at this letter from Benzonia and I hope and pray that everyone has a merry and very blessed Christmas. Please remember you're all very special to me, and I love you very much. And I thank you for being here, and I thank you for your prayerful support. God bless you, and I will see you soon.